everyone, my name is Dani Mibulanio from F3 and my report is all about ethics and student knowledge of learning targets and assessments. Ethics. This chapter centers on ethical issues and responsibility of teachers in the assessment process. Based on Russell relations, they define that assessment is more than just an, a technical activities, it is a human activities. They explain that assessment has consequences to students and other stakeholders. Like, if you recall our if you recall the relevance and rules of assessments, teachers as well as students, administrators, policy holders, and other stakeholders have a take on assessments. Assessment is used from judgment on the nature, scope, and extent of student learning. For summative purposes, assessment is used for grading, placement, or admission. Well, Teachers also have an important role, long-term and short-term consequences for teacher for students. Thus, teachers have an ethical responsibility to make decisions using the most valid and reliable information as possible. By any large, teachers are acquaintable in ensuring that their assessments are aspects of fairness. Fairness in an ethical value. Other aspect of fairness is include student knowledge, student knowledge of learning targets and assessments, like my report. Number two, opportunity to learn. Number three, prerequisite knowledge and skills. Number four, avoiding student stereotyping. Number five, avoiding bias in assessment tasks and procedures, and accommodating special needs. Well, to student knowledge of learning targets and assessments, these aspects of fairness speaks of transparency. Well, transparency is defined how here as a disclosure of information to students about assessments. Transparency means it will be clear to students how will how will be they assist on the criteria. This includes the learning outcomes, assessments, methods, and format grading criteria and deadlines. Test taking skills. Well, some student in, is good in answering multiple choice than other students. They learn a strategy for the test taking that will serve them on exam that requires responding to question relating to the test. Well, as you can see, or as you can hear, transparency from what transparency defines. Dapat daw na sinasabi ng teacher sa atin yung mga requirements about sa topics or sa paano nila tayo ina-assess na paano ina-assess ng teacher yung students. Dapat daw na sinasabi yung criteria or well-informed yung mga students about sa paano nila ina-assess or paano nila a-assessin yung mga students. And about naman sa test taking skills is that <clears throat> well, unfortunately or totoo naman na meron talaga tayong mga students or may mga students na magagaling sa multiple choices pagdating sa exams. So, sabi dito that they learn a strategy for the test taking exam. During the exam, taw ang sa ang tawag do don sa sa magagaling na magagaling na students pagdating sa multiple choices is test taking skills. They develop an um, strategy 
for for answering that that kind of questions you know well that's all for my report and thank you for listening Good day everyone! My name is Mark Esiliori Padilla from BEC and FP. And now, I'm gonna be your reporter for this topic. Um, it's all about the opportunity to learn through avoiding stereotyping. Um, what is stereotypes? It's a widely held, simplified, and essentialist belief about a specific group. This is the group are open stereotype on the basis of sex, gender identity, race, and ethnicity, nationality, age, socioeconomic status, language, and so forth. Stereotypes are deeply embedded within social institution and wider culture. How can we avoid stereotyping? Focusing on traits associated with certain groups based on race or ethnicity gender or other characteristic reinforcement of stereotyping and can ignore other aspects of learners' performance. Avoid these stereotypes by focusing on observed behavior and describing competency-based performance. Why do we need to avoid stereotyping? Stereotypes also reduce the self-esteem motivation, and intellectual performance of women and minorities through a process called a stereotype street. A stereotype street reduces performance in situation where an individual might confirm a negative stereotype about his or he group. We have four ways to prevent stereotyping in your classroom. First, have honest conversation about a stereotype three. Honesty and openness are the case then of change. A good place to start is reflecting on your own inherent biases and owning up to and connecting your mistake. When you lead by example, you can create a safe space that allows for difficult conversation and encourages students to address their faulty thinking. Look for opportunities to raise awareness about a stereotype during lessons, whether they come from resources or from the students themselves. Be clear but respectful, and keep in mind that even if you don't have time for a deep dive into the bias in the moment, acknowledging it briefly will still help to shift perspective. Number two way is create an exclusive environment. So all teacher, you need to set the tone in your classroom and what you choose to share and highlight can help you create a bias-free environment. For example, what type of image decorate the classroom walls and feature in materials? Do they represent all cultures and balance of genders? Is the room accessible for students with disabilities? Do you use example for past student successes that include a range of social groups? These things can make a big difference to the sense of belonging that students feel. Not to mention broadening their word views by making diversity the norm. Number three, expose students to range of perspective in teaching materials. Many of you have a natural tendency to only what to hear from we agree with. But actively challenging this inclination is a key aspect of reducing stereotype treat classroom. Stereotypes are reef in literature, movies, teaching materials, and even current events. And while this is not ideal, it does provide a great learning opportunity for students. Ask them to identify stereotypes they notice in curriculum, resources, or in the news and discusses them in class. And make sure to point out anything that is missed to show how easily we accept biases as reality. Expose students to range of perspective in teaching materials. Many of you have a natural tendency to only what to hear from we agree with but actively challenging this inclination is a key aspect of reducing stereotype treat classroom. 
Stereotypes are brief in literature, movies, teaching materials, and even current events. And while this is not ideal, it does provide a great learning opportunity for students. Ask them to identify stereotypes they notice in curriculum, resources, or in the news and discusses them in class. And make sure to point out anything that is missed to show how easily we accept biases as reality. Number four, foster a growth mindset in the classroom. Encouraging a growth mindset is an effective remedy to encounter the message of embedded stereotypes. Teach your students that their potential is not fixed. With continued uh, practice and dedication, they can change and improve even within areas that are currently challenging. Create an atmosphere that values mistakes as opportunities for learning. If a student answers a question incorrectly, ask them to explain their thought uh, process and help them recognize where the error occurred. When setting assignments, try to include some low stakes. Activities such as, you know, quizzes and projects where effort and critical thinking are more important than being right. Encourage students um, to think out loud. Take risks and ask questions and embrace problems and model this behavior yourself. The stereotype treat can be difficult to combat for the simple reason that it often goes unrecognized. But by incorporating these strategies into your teaching practice, you can begin to silence the dialogue that inhibits students' performance and build an environment that allows each of them to realize their unique potential. Good day to each and everyone. Good day to our beloved teacher, Teacher John Mark Segovia Igay, and good, good day to my fellow classmates. My name is Ralph Dende Paradela. And I am from Bachelor of Early Childhood Education, Section F3. So, Teacher John Mark Segovia Igay told me to discuss this lesson. The Chapter 6, which is The Ethics from Accommodating Special Needs to Competency and Content Being Assessed. So, before we can start, um, let's talk about ethics. What comes into your mind from the word ethics? Okay, so um, the ethics is um, showing good moral principles. So we as a teacher, um, we must show ethical principles to the students. Not for the students, but for all. Because we as a future educator, we must be a good example as i share the verse of first corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 imitate me as i imitate christ so if we if we set a good example to our students so the students imitate our good attitudes our good personalities if we show ethical principles or we can show or if we can show good moral principles so let's proceed to our first topic or the introduction teachers need to be sensitive of the students certain accommodations must be given especially for those who are physically or mentally challenged from the sentence teachers need to be sensitive of the students what does it mean to be sensitive? So sensitive, as I said earlier, we must help the students. We must be a good example to our students. Not just ignoring them if they are struggling. So kita mismo, we as a teachers, we need to be sensitive. To be, to help them, for example, um, um, a student didn't understand the text fast but the teacher um, is ignoring them um, we are um, 
not we are, but the teacher is showing insensitive. So if we as a teacher, um, if we if we saw the student or if we see the student um, struggling, their activities, they cannot comprehend the activity, they can understand very well, we must help them. We must be sensitive. Because we as a teacher, um, not just to our job, but we are helping the students because we love them and we love God. So, next. There are two laws of the accommodating special needs. So, first, the legal basis for accommodation is contained in Section Number 12 of Republic Act 7277 entitled An Act Providing for the Rehabilitation, Self-Development, and Self-Reliance or this of Disabled Person and Their Integration into the Mainstream of Society and for Other Purposes. So remember this law, Section Number 12 of RA 7277. Again, we teachers let's remember this law let's remember this republic act 7277 the provision talks about access to quality education the lear that learning institutions should consider the special needs of learners with disabilities in terms of facilities class schedules physical education requirements and other related matters so um the learning institutions um uh, they need we need to consider the special needs of the learners or the students with disabilities in terms of their class schedules or every other related matters so in short we must consider their special needs their basic special needs. Another is Section 32 of CHED, which is the Commission of Higher Education Memorandum 9 Series of 2013 on Enhanced Policies and Guidelines on Students' Affairs and Services, which states that higher education institutions should ensure that academic accommodation is made available to persons with disabilities and learners with special needs. So the higher education, for example, um, the DepEd, the CHED, or uh, any higher institutions, um, they really assure you, the students, they really assure the students that the academic accommodation is made available. From the word available, um, naa, kanang pwede. For that to persons with disabilities and learners with special needs again let's repeat for the laws section number 12 of RA 7277 entitled an act providing for the rehabilitation self-development and self-reliance of disabled person and their integration into the mainstream of society and for other purposes okay number two Section number 32 of Shed Memorandum 09 Series of 2013, Policies and Guidelines on Students' Affairs and... Okay, let's proceed to our accommodation. So, accommodation does not mean giving advantage to students with learning disabilities, but rather allowing them to demonstrate their knowledge on assessments without hindrances from their disabilities. It is distinct from assessment, modification as accommodation does not insinuate altering the construct of the assessment, what the assessment was intended to measure in the first place. So, um, the accommodation does, does not mean that you are giving better to the students with learning disabilities. Um, for example, hey, it is better that, that learning disabilities are better than normal students. It's not. But rather than to allow the learning, the disabilities, the persons with the disabilities to demonstrate or to allow them to assess their knowledge without or kanang 
di nila ma-feel, they are not feeling others than the normal students. So, we are equal. Okay, proceed. Let us consider some situations that require accommodations. There are three situations that we need to consider teachers to accommodate the special needs or the basic needs of the students. Number one, for students with documented learning disabilities who are slow in reading, analyzing, and responding to test questions, the teacher can offer extended time to complete the text. So we as a teacher, we must do our job. For example, um, um, a diff cannot hear what the teacher says. Anna, for example, Nana. And one of, uh, one of your students who are slow in reading is because he is not a... He is a nearsighted, or she is a nearsighted. Um, you must, um, you must extend time to complete the activity or to complete the text or to complete reading, teachers. And we as a teacher, we as a future educator, we must do this to help them to improve and to accommodate them, to help them in a simple way. Proceed. For students who are easily distracted by noise, the teacher can make arrangements for the students to accomplish the assessment in another room free from distractions, carry out or carry out simple or innovative ways to reduce unnecessary noise from entering the classroom. So for those students who are easily distracted the noise, um we as a future educator, um we are doing our best to arrange, to accomplish their activity, to assessment in other room. For example, I am a subject teacher of the English. So, um, I go to the BCN F3, for example. We assume that situation. We assume. So, um, I am a subject teacher of the English. So, uh, my, my class is on the BCN F3. So, if one of my students um, didn't understand the text, um, I can help or if the student can easily distract the noises, um, I will do my best and I can make arrangements um, to make um, to make the the another room for for free fraction of the noise. So proceed. For students who do not have perfect vision, the teacher can adjust and print the written assessment with a larger fan. So, for example, um, um, our classmates, or not our classmates, for example, I am a student. Our classmate is struggling um, to portray the um, text or to read the fan. Because he or she is nearsighted, as I have said earlier. But the teacher can adjust, the teacher can do their best, and uh, the teacher um, will um, make another accommodation to the students so that um, for those, for students who do not have perfect vision, um, they can. Kanang, makasabay sila sa learning they are not others of their classmates they are not others for those who are deaf for those who are lame for those who are, are for those who have do not have perfect vision for those who are slowly in reading um teachers must help them um we first as a future educator we must help our students So even our students didn't help their classmates because they are struggling too. 
um, they are free to ask questions to our teachers. Um, we as a future educator, if we have students, um, they are free to ask why they are they didn't understand the written assessment. So we as a future educator, playing them, do our best to explain them. So, accommodations can be placed in six categories: by Thorlow, Mac, Thompson, and by to, by the year two thousand. So, there are six accommodations can be placed in six categories of accommodations. First is the presentation, repeat directions, read aloud, use large print or braille or braille or whatever. Um, for example, presentation. Um, we as a teacher, we prepare. Uh, must prepare prints. For example, to read A, to read B, to read C, D, E, or the alphabetical order and even the numbers we must be ready so that they are beginning to learn the numbers the the letters they are beginning to read so we as a future educator we must do this presentation okay number two is response mark answers in test booklet permit responses via digital recorder or computer use reference materials like dictionary Number three is setting, study carrel, separate room, preferential seating, individualized or small group, or special lighting. So, so setting is the setting is um, the classroom. So which is um, we have many classrooms to to teach the students. So, maraming classroom tayo sa school. So. The setting of most um, talan uh, tayo is my setting, which is the class. So we as a future educator, wala naman sigurong teacher na hindi mai-provide ang sariling classroom for his or her student. So, dapat may setting dapat ang student na na sila'y ma-learn sa topic or sa lahang ginastadihan. Number four, timing. So, as a teacher, um, wala naman extended time. So, um, the extended time, so syempre, if, if my students or if my future students um, struggling their activity, I must do, uh, um, we must do teachers, we as a future educator, um, we must do extended time to them. And even frequent breaks or unlimited time. It depends on the assessment of learning. Okay? Scheduling. Specific time of day, subtest in different order, administers administer test in several time session. For example, of the specific time of day, um, I have a class. Um, I have a class time of English, Monday, eight thirty to nine thirty. So that is my schedule to my students to accommodate them. What is their basic needs? What didn't what they did not understand the English um, why uh, how um, they are asking uh, that is my schedule to accommodate them number six is others special test preparation techniques and out of level tests fundamentally an assessment accommodation should attend to the particular need of the student concern. For instance, presentation and setting are important considerations for a learner who is visually impaired. For a learner diagnosed with attention, deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD, frequent breaks are needed during a test because of the child's short attention span 
to ensure the appropriateness of the accommodation supplied, it should take into account three important elements. So there are three again. Number one is nature and extent of the learner's disability, type and format of assessment, and competency and content being assessed. Number one is nature and extent of the learner's disability. Accommodation is dictated by the type and degree of disability possessed by the learner. A learner with moderate visual impairment would need a larger print edi edition of the assessment or special lighting condition. Of course, a different type of accommodation is needed if the child has severe visual loss. So, kumbaga, um, sa, with a learner, uh, they need a large print edition or assessment or special lighting condition. Um, um, I give a situation. So, we as a teacher, um, they are trying their best if from the biggest letter into smallest letter, if, if maklaro ba nila. So, if the, hindi, um, we as a teacher, we are doing our best, as I have said earlier. Number two, type and format of assessment. Accommodation is matched to the type and format of assessment given. Accommodations vary depending on the length of the assessment, the time allotted, mode of response, etc. A partially deaf child would not require assistance in a written test. However, his or her hearing impairment would affect his or her performance should the test be dictated. He or she would also have difficulty in assessment tasks characterized by group discussions like round table sessions. So, in fact, accommodation is matched to the type and format of assessment given. So, we as a future educator, um, we must vary depending on the length of assessment. So, um, so for example, um, if you are deaf, um, sa Tagalog pa, bingi, um, the child or the student didn't require assistance because he or she knows what she writes or he writes in the written test. If he or she can read, but he or she is deaf, um, um, he or she has a problem to group discussions because he or she didn't hear what is the ideas, what are, what they can do because he is deaf or she is deaf. So, it depends to the type and format of assessment. Number three, competency and content being assessed. Accommodation does not alter the level of performance or content the assessment measures. Kung baga, kung mag-accommodation, hindi na dapat baguhin yung performance o content na assessment. Ganon. Dapat, hindi na baguhin ang level of performance. Kasi, pag sinasabing competency, it's the word competition. And the content na, na i-assess natin yung content. And for example, in science, permitting students to have a list of scientific formulae or formula during a test is acceptable if the teacher is assessing how students are able to apply the formula and not simple recall. For example, um, a simple formula, um, the mass, the velocity, um, the teacher allow the students to um, to bring the formula or to to 
use the formula table of the signs so that they know when they apply the formula. It depends on the situation. So, in mathematics, if the objective is to add and subtract counting numbers quickly, extended time would not be a reasonable accommodation. So, kung kumbaga, um, hindi na reason, hindi na siya reason na mag-extend time ka sa mga estudyante if they know to count the numbers, to add and subtract quickly. Because they know how to assess their learning from us as a future educator, as a future teacher. So, generally, um, we must accommodate our students. Not to ignore them, but to help them to improve. Because we as a future educator, we are a hero to them. And we are uh, a good example to them. That would be all. Thank you and God bless.